All right, so what gives? We're, we're talking about these asymmetrical pull-ups. Why do they look like that? Why is that one shoulder elevating more than the other one? Why, uh, why are both my shoulders tilting forward? Well, it has to do, in my mind, the, the extremities only do what they can. And they, you're demanding of them to do a pull up. So they got to find a way to get your chest, you know, basically to the bar, your chin to the bar. Uh, if they don't have the position to access those upper back muscles to help you really depress and downwardly rotate your shoulder blades so that you can finish that pull up at the top of the pull up, then something else has to happen. And that's where we see that posterior shoulder start to take up some of the slack, is trying to do extra work, and that stuff gets real tired. I know that's a big one for me. Um, let's, let's talk about the rib cage, though. So, uh, how much anatomy are we going to go into? Let's just try to give you the, the cliff's notes. So we are asymmetrical. The only thing that's really symmetrical in our body is our skeleton. But if you take all of our, you know, it looks like we got two arms and two eyes and two ears or whatever. But if you take all the skin off and you're not looking at the bones, all the organs, the nervous system, everything is really asymmetrical. Every cell individually is asymmetrical. Um, so we have this pervasive asymmetry throughout our body. And since most people are built pretty much the same way, that asymmetry is pretty consistent between human to human to human. So I might work with 40 different people and I'm probably giving 40 of you the same kinds of resets, the same kinds of mobility building uh, exercises because you were all humans and you all have the same problems. All of you have a big liver that's only on your right side and all of you have a tiny spleen that's only on your left side. All of you have no colon in the right ilium and all you have a sigmoid colon in the left ilium. So these things, having stuff in the way, makes the rest of this challenging. And so we've got to learn how to, you know, manipulate our body in ways, tolerate different, you know, compression and relaxations in different ways so that we can stay as symmetrical as possible for our training. And specifically in this case, for a pull-up. Um, so with that given asymmetry, you know, we talked about the liver being on the right side, the big breathing muscle in the middle of your body is way bigger on the right than it is on the left. And that plays into it as well. And then the other thing that's really, really obvious is your heart is actually shifted over to the left. So it makes us really good. All that stuff together. We got nice support, for that big right breathing muscle, and we got a heart supporting the left lung. It makes the left lung really good at filling. And so what happens is the left rib cage gets really big and really wide, and the right rib cage doesn't do it quite as much. And so when they come together, we have asymmetry. I mean, that's, that's like the simplest explanation I can give you. Um, it happens in a bunch of different planes of motion, and we'll get to that in our coming video. Um, but what I want to talk about today is this rib cage position. So if the left one gets bigger, what does that do to everything else? We don't need to understand everything that goes on. But one thing that I will tell you is that it makes the left rib cage wider. It makes it harder for the shoulder blade to move because it's wider. It can't come forward and it can't downwardly rotate. And it needs to downwardly rotate for a pull-up if I'm gonna finish at the top. I might feel better if I just come, you know, halfway up, if I have this issue. If I'm not fixing the issue, that would be a good workaround. But if I wanna fix the issue, if I wanna fix the asymmetry, I, I can't pay attention to the shoulder yet. I need to fix what is more in the middle, what is before the shoulder, and that is the rib cage. Uh, so big wide rib cage, it makes it good at bringing that shoulder back and it kind of sets it back itself already because there's so much air on that left side, uh, but it blocks the downward rotation because it's 
already downwardly rotated. Ain't that cool. Um, so it can't do it anymore. So you know what picks it up? That posterior shoulder on the left side. It tries to get me extra shoulder adduction to finish the pull up. Now, it's just, you know, if you don't know all the terms, it's just trying to do the extra work, okay? So what we need to restore is we need to eliminate the need for that posterior shoulder to turn on, and we need to restore the ability for the shoulder blade to move again. And to do that, we need to fix what class? We need to fix the rib cage, okay? Um, the other muscle I wanted to talk about is the upper neck, like the trap and the levator scapula, this upper neck area. That likes to turn on in this because there's so much air there, because the shoulder is being pushed up there. It, it's the only way that that shoulder can get downward rotation. If I take the shoulder blade away from the rib cage, I've now created room for it to rotate. And now it can downwardly rotate. So that's why you might be seeing that. And as it comes up, it's really normal for it to kind of slide forward. Um, and, you know, we talked about, I mentioned that the, the depressed shoulder might be tilted forward as well. That's just because there's less air there and that shoulder blade is already tilted forward. It can't come back anymore because there's no air helping it get back. There's no um, wideness, there's no breadth to that side of the rib cage that's helping it come back. That's helping those upper back muscles on the right side turn on. So that was way more than anybody ever wanted to know about the rib cage.